Hello everyone, I am Pratap here. We are at part 1 of lesson 19. And earlier lessons are, can be accessible from our YouTube channel. If you go to Neostock community section, I have provided the link. If you click the link, you will get into the playlist Supply Demand Zone Price Action course. Even I have provided the link in this YouTube video description. Even if you click the link, you will get into this space. And then scroll down to the bottom of this space. Here starting from lesson 1.1, all the training videos are available in an order. So please go through all these lessons one by one before you get into lesson 19. Even I have provided the link to our telegram channel in this YouTube video description. Please join in the telegram channel. It will be helpful to you. Each time when we release a new video, we will provide an update in the channel. Now let's get into lesson 19 part 1. So we are going to focus on sets. SETS. That is stop loss, entry, target and S indicates one more S indicates size. And we already land stop loss, entry and target in our uh, earlier lessons, if I am not wrong, lesson 3 or lesson 5, I have explained about risk management. But the fourth parameter, one more yes, we have introduced and we learn more about the second yes, that is size, position size in the next video. But here I will just give you an overview. So what you already learned about sets, yes indicates stop loss, first S indicates stop loss. You already land, stop loss should be decided based on the distal line. But in this lesson you will be learning, that should not be exactly at the distal line. You will be learning in this lesson, it should be beyond the distal line by using a concept stop buffer. And entry, we already land. We already land entry should be decided based on the proximal line. It could be type 1 proximal, type 2 proximal, type 3 proximal. This is what you already land earlier. But when you are actually making your trades, you should enter the trade slightly before price reaches your proximal line. Because by the time prices enter into the proximal line, maybe the hard order flow could be heavy. Prices may turn back and immediately it will go up or it will go down depending on your long order or short order. If that is the case, you might miss your entry. So that is the reason why we always place our entry slightly before price reaches to the proximal line. Generally, we use buffer also before the proximal line. 0.1% buffer before the proximal line is an ideal scenario. Generally, you can keep. You may keep just before the proximal line or within 0.1% before the proximal line also you can keep the entry or in between proximal line and 0.1% buffer anywhere in the middle also you can take the entry. It is all depending on your risk management. But this is one important point you should understand. And the next one is a target. We already learned a target should be decided based on the opposing zone's proximal line. But in reality, you should exit the trade slightly before prices are reaching to the target. Because in the target, there could be a Target means in the target supply zone, if, uh, if your zone is a target, uh, demand zone, your target zone could be a supply zone. Maybe there could be a heavy strong order flow and that may push the prices down. But you want to exit from your long trade and you want to book the profit. But because there is a strong order flow, before your order executes, the prices will go down. That way your profit margin will reduce. That possibility is there. So that is the reason why generally what we do, 
when prices are before entering into your opposing zone you will exit from your trade and book the profit and the size the fourth letter in sets is size s indicates the second s indicates size this is the one we didn't focus in our earlier discussions size indicates the number of shares whether you want to buy or you want to sell that means the number of shares you want to i mean no the number of shares you want to buy if it is your long order or the number of shares you want to sell if it is short order that is what the size indicates but these number of shares they are all depending on your risk management what exactly depending on the risk management that we will discuss in the next video when we talk about position size we will also call it as a position sizing so it should be decided based on the position size rules and we will have a separate video for position size because it's a very important concept because of this concept you will save your capital if the risk is high also you can take if the risk occurs you won't lose the money very a small portion of the money whatever the risk you are accepting a small amount only you will be losing that way we will save our capital all those are techniques i will explain in detail with example in the next video because it is a very important uh, uh, concept i want to make it in a separate video stop buffer so this is the main topic uh, in this video let us understand what is a stop buffer a buffer we use beyond the digital line is called stop buffer first of all what is a buffer buffer is a small price range i repeat buffer is a small price range and this small price range you are using beyond your digital line that means if it is a demand zone below the digital line if it is a supply zone above the digital line you are using a small range very small range and that small range is called stop buffer the reason is sometimes prices will go a little below the demand zone or a little above the supply zone and again they reverse you might have experienced many times the moment they cross the digital line you will exit from the trade because your stop loss is triggered the moment you exit from the trade immediately prices will turn back and finally they reach the target and you feel like you got the loss for the trade you are supposed to get the profit so prices are moving beyond the digital line and then they again they are turning back to avoid these conditions we are using a small buffer how we calculate the buffer you will understand very soon and that small buffer is called stop buffer first of all why we need these stop buffers why prices are going beyond the digital line and immediately they turn back what could be the reason the reason is sometimes institutions might move their order flow slightly beyond the digital line i repeat sometimes institutions might move their order flow slightly beyond the digital line why they are moving their order flow slightly beyond the digital line it's mainly because of the volatility conditions in the market or maybe the volatility conditions in a stock due to that reason they don't want their order flow should be disturbed that's why they slightly move their order flow because their order flow is moved slightly 
obviously our prices also should go a little deeper it could be beyond the distal line once they reach the distal line and after that the order flow is there and now again uh, they picked up the orders and started moving up if it is a demand zone or started moving down it is a supply zone why institutions are moving mainly because of the volatile changes in the volatility conditions in the market because sometimes all of a sudden market volatility will be increased due to increase in the volatility institutions don't want their order flow should be disturbed this is the main reason behind moving their order flows but we never know institutions are moving their order flow we never know because of their movement our trades will be disturbed so that is the reason why what we are doing we are also taking the help of a volatility indicator i repeat we are also taking the help of volatility indicator and adjusting our stop loss so what is that volatility indicator that volatility indicator is called atr so we use the help of volatility indicator atr to calculate this stop buffer and the abbreviation of atr is average true range and this is calculated based on 14 periods of average of the true range values so it is the 14 period average of true ranges and we are not getting into the calculations of these atr values that is not the objective of this session and in this session we mainly understand how to make use of this atr indicator and define stop buffers so let us focus on that point so we should use a daily atr of most recent candle this is the most important point for calculating the stop buffer you should use only daily atr and the to the most recent candle that means you should not use monthly atr you should not use weekly atr or you should not use 75 minutes atr or 15 minutes atr or some other time period atr you have to use only daily atr and that to that atr of the most recent candle the most recent closed candle strictly speaking most recent closed candle what exactly the meaning of most recent closed candle the meaning is you should not use the live candle if market is going on but market is not completed that means not closed so during the live market you cannot take live candle that is what the meaning the candle should be completed so during the live market if you want to refer the atr value you have to refer only the previously closed candle then when i have to refer the today's candle only after market closing hours only i can refer today's candle only after closing market hours only today's candle will, be, will become most recently available closed candle always remember this point it's a very very important point otherwise you will make mistake okay the point we understood always we have to use only daily atr value of the most recently closed candle okay fine then how to calculate so we use we should use a daily atr for calculating the buffer in all time frames for all time frames we are using daily atr only so how do we calculate by using some percentage of atr by using some percentage of atr that percentage value will be changing from time frame to time frame actually instead of saying time frame to time frame from income trade to income trade is the most appropriate statement because we have four main income trades monthly income trade and weekly income trade they are the swing trade setups and also daily income trade and uh, 
uh, hourly income trade they are short term trade setups okay so based on these time frames the percentage of atr value will change okay what is that uh, percentage value for different time frames that we will see very soon first we will look into the formula how we calculate stop buffer for demand zone and also how we calculate stop buffer for supply zone for demand zone stop buffer equals to demand zone or distal line already we have demand zone distal line from the distal line subtract the value which value we have to subtract some percentage of daily atr instead of some i am using the word x x percentage of daily atr x could be 15 percent or x could be 10 percent or x could be a 5 percent that is what the meaning so that means for example you can say demand zone distal line minus 5 percentage of daily atr or another example you can say demand zone distal line minus 15 percentage of daily atr this is the way we calculate how we identify x we will see very soon Similarly, supply zone also, similar formula, but only difference is, now supply zone distal line plus X percentage of daily ATR. Demand zone, you are subtracting the value from the distal line, but for supply zone, you are adding the value to the distal line. Whatever X percentage of daily ATR you are saying, that is the stop buffer. If I say 15 percentage of daily ATR, whatever the 15 percentage of daily ATR value, that value is going to be the stop buffer. If I say 5 percentage of the daily ATR, whatever the value you are going to get for 5 percentage of ATR, that is going to be the stop buffer value. That means the stop buffer value should be subtracted for the demand zone from distal line or stop buffer value you have to add to the supply zone distal line this is what these two formulas are saying x indicates the percentage value defined for an income trade okay which values are defined for the income trades that we will see in the next slide next slide is very important slide now we have the complete list daily ATR percentages for different income trades. See here we are using only daily ATR. For monthly income trade we are using 15% of daily ATR. But remember it should be a round up value. It is not round down value. What does it mean? Suppose 15% of daily ATR is 5 rupee 23 paisa 5 rupee 23 but we will not use 23 in the market we will use 5 rupees 20 paisa or we will use 5 rupee 25 paisa so that means we need to round the value how you need to round the value upside round you have to do not downside round 5 rupees 23 paisa upside round value means 5 rupees 25 paisa Suppose if it is 5 rupee 11 paisa, how we have to consider is it 5 rupee 10 paisa or is it 5 rupee 15 paisa? What is that we have specified in the bracket? You have to round upside, round up. That means you have to round the value towards the upside. That means 5 rupee 11 paisa, if you round up, it will become 5 rupee 15 paisa. Always remember, you need to round up the value. Some stocks doesn't support paisa. At the time, you need to round the value to the upside rupees. For example, if you have 23,000, 5 paisa. 23,000, 5 paisa. How do you treat that? 23,000, 1 rupee you have to consider, something like that. If paisa doesn't support, if any stocks. See, always simple, very simple. Don't round down. Never down 
to the never around the value towards the downside always around the value towards the upside this is a simple rule thumb rule then you will get clarity this is for mit monthly income trade 15% daily atr but here one more question you have to ask in mit trade we have three time frames htf itf and ltf which time frame you have to use see all these values you have to use lower time frame that is your entry time frame in mit what is your entry time frame daily so daily zone only for your because you are taking your entry on daily time frame so that's why your stop loss should be adjusted on the daily time frame only not monthly time frame or not a, a weekly time frame whichever the time frame you are taking entry in that time frame only you need to adjust the stop loss so this 15% of daily atr you have to use for daily zone so demand zone or supply zone demand zone you will subtract the value from the dis daily digital line for supply zone you will uh, add the value for the daily supply zone digital line now wat you will be using 10% of the daily atr in wat income your entry time could be either 75 minutes or even 125 minutes either one you can use but whichever the zone you have to use only 10% of the daily atr and dit trade you have to use 5% of the daily atr in dit trade your entry time frame that is lower time frame is 15 minutes so in 15 minutes time frame you have to use see monthly income trade is a daily is the entry time frame wat trade 75 minutes or 125 minutes either one you can use but in dit time frame you have to use 15 minutes so 15 minutes time frame entry you have to use 5% of the atr value daily atr value and the last one is hit in hit trade you will be using 5 minute zones as an entry so for this 5 minute zones you have to calculate 3% of 3% of daily atr but remember this is an improved value 3% earlier people are using 2% of daily atr value but i have felt 3% is more effective than 2% of daily atr if you still want to use 2% of daily atr you can use nothing wrong because whatever the values we are specifying here they are the minimum values if i say 5% of daily atr in 15 minutes that is only a minimum value that is a buffer you can increase the buffer you cannot reduce to 4% or 2% minimum 5% you can increase to 6% or 7% the reason is the reason is when you increase you have the flexibility but only problem is your risk will impact as long as your risk does not impact that means you are within your risk limit whatever the maximum accepted risk if you are within that limit you can increase the value you can increase the value up to the maximum acceptable risk level you can do but beyond that you cannot do if risk exceeds maximum acceptable level you cannot take the trade so that is the reason why all these values whatever i am specifying 15% 10% 5% or 3% for different income trades they are the minimum values but hit they define 2% as a minimum value i repeat hit trades that is 5 minute zones they define 2% as the minimum value actually but in my testing and in my analysis i found 3% is more effective that's why i fixed 3% so that it is more effective but if you feel you want to go for 2% you can go with that because 2% is also a valid one but i am following this rule 3% is of daily atr for hit trades this is an improved version this is the point you have to remember 
but old supply and demand zone traders who still wants to follow the 10 15 years back whatever we identified the 2% still if you want to follow it is up to you but uh, as per me 3% is working effectively okay this is about uh, different values for this x percent what you have seen in this formula now hope you got the clarity what exactly x for uh, mit trade x is x is 15 percent for wit trade x is 10 percent for dit trade x is 5 percent for hit trade x is 3 percent still you can use two also list but we improved the system we are using 2% this is the way you calculate stop buffers for different income trades hope you got the clarity it's a simple mathemat ma mathematics and always remember this sheet it is very important okay you may ask a question is it really effective yes let me show you an examples recent during this week only during this week during the trading couple of stocks they hit the distal line they went beyond the distal line but they are within this stop buffer area and again they returned and they gave us good profits if we would not have used stop buffer we would have got losses in that stocks instead of getting the loss we got profit even after prices goes beyond the distal line let me show you those examples the first one is adani ports last monday this trade was executed last monday means 11th march 2024 even in our daily high liquidity zone analysis videos we discussed about this stock you can also refer that video on 11th march 2024 look into the supply zone this is the fine tuned 5 minute supply zone we expected the order flow in this area but that day the volatility in the market in this part especially in this stock was a little high that's why prices went beyond this 5 minutes supply zone but they are within this stop buffer area see here the stop loss is not exactly at the distal line the stop loss is a little higher from this stop loss till this distal line whatever the range is there that range is called stop buffer that's why we, we i told you stop buffer buffer means a small range beyond this distal line a small range beyond the distal line is called stop buffer see prices went beyond this range i mean beyond this distal line but within this range because here institutional order flow is there see how it pushed the prices down if you would not have used this stop buffer concept you would have exited the moment price crossed this distal line that way you would have got the stopped out order and the loss you would have got whatever this stop loss but because we used this stop buffer it saved our trade after that prices came down and finally reached the target and this is the way adani ports has given a profit 7400 rupees as per one futures margin cost and it is a 2.9% return on the investment as per one futures margin cost that means whatever the margin amount you paid for buying one future in that particular investment you got 2.9% profit during the intraday see in intraday anything beyond 1% is a very good profit but this one has given 2.9% even though prices went beyond the distal line still we got the profit 
so here stop buffer is our savior it saved our trade let me show you one more example exit industries even this trade also happened this week 11th we have seen adani ports how it saved and this trade happened on 12th 12th march 2024 immediate next day and one more stock is saved by our stop buffer concept look into this demand zone we have a drop base rally within this demand zone again another zone is created lotl drop base rally for the risk management point of view we have selected this zone because here the orders are picked up strong order flow is there by considering all these factors this is the area we can plan a trade but what happened prices went beyond the distal line they hit the distal line they came down those who did not use stop buffers probably they would have exited their trades but after that see what happened price reversed and again they were started moving up did it cross our stop buffer area no it exactly reached the stop loss line in this candle it just touched the stop loss but it didn't go beyond the stop loss if it goes beyond the stop loss we would have exited the trade we would have got the loss but just touched the stop loss and then again started moving up and finally reached the target this is the way exit industries has given 12060 rupees profit during the intraday as per one futures margin cost do you know what is roi here 5.9% that means close to 6% roi it has given during the intraday roi means return on the investment for your investment is one futures margin cost what are the cost your stock broker is charging for buying one futures that is futures margin cost so in the for that investment you got 5.9% profit that is i am calling it as roi return on the investment previously i told you 1% profit during intraday means excellent but now we got 5.9 that means close to 6% that is extraordinary right because all these things the 3.9 2.9% earlier trade 5 5.9% in this trade both are saved because of this stop loss and huge profits we are getting from these zones mainly because these are all the high liquidity zones generated by our neo stock software neo stock software high liquidity zones concepts they always gives high profits during the intraday actually this profit you are 5.9% profit you are supposed to get for a short period of time maybe within a week whatever the profit you are supposed to get in within a week we got it in intraday itself such a powerful this concept is and by analyzing the past data we identified these high liquidity zones are giving 6.1% roi the average roi 6.1 Okay, exit industries almost close to that profit it has given, but other reports gave less profit compared to that six point one percent ROI. Only half of the percentage only it has given, but still intraday point of view they are huge profits. And some other high liquidity zones they may give sometimes maybe seven percent, eight percent, nine percent ROI also. That's why the average ROI we are getting six point one percent. but whatever it is both these stocks are saved by the concept stop buffer stop buffer concept allowed us to adjust our stop loss instead of keeping at the distal line earlier before landing stop buffer concept you are keeping your stop loss exactly at the distal line now you are not keeping your stop loss at the distal line you move your stop loss a little beyond the distal line it is below the distal line it is a demand zone or above the distal line it is a supply zone 
see this is the 3 percent of the 5 minutes time frame 3 percent atr we calculated 3 percent daily atr for exit industries so exactly it reached the 3 percent of atr value and then started moving up a small area only small this is very small the range is very small that's why i told you the 3 percent level is working effectively compared to the 2 percent level if you would have kept 2 percent of your atr it would have been hit your stop loss 3 percent is working effectively for uh, for uh, hit trades hourly income trades especially on the 5 minutes time frames okay these are all the best examples right now you may ask a question how to get this atr value from where we can find this atr value in trading view it is possible trading view atr indicator is there average true range if you go to trading view indicators and if you type uh, average true range or even atr if you type it will display the moment you select that indicator it will plot a graph it will plot a graph in your charts so in the recent time frame if you place your mouse on that particular graph it will display the atr value that is the way you can get the atr value but you have to do it on the daily time frame only because for all these calculations we are using only daily atr so once you get the value you need to calculate 15 percent or 10 percent or 5 percent or 3 percent this is one way you can do and another thing what i am doing is because i already developed uh, average true, true range that is atr indicator almost some uh, uh, i think almost eight or nine years back i developed this indicator and few days back i have integrated this atr with our supply demand zone price action after integration let me show you the reports i have added a new button atr here previously we were seeing only top down strategy now atr button is also added so what i did for daily time frame for this daily time frame i click if i click on this atr it will display report for all the stocks that is uh, we have around 17 indices and the remaining all are equity stocks listed in uh, f and o segment they are not f and o stocks they are equity stocks but listed in f and o for all the atrs even the calculated atrs that is a 15% value uh 10% value 5% value everything i displayed see now let me click this atr we get all the atr values see here the complete report will be dis displayed here the first 17 in this list are indices remaining all are equity stocks listed in f and o segments this here we have the stock code the next column date the latest date and the last traded price for this date and then daily atr value see here this column we have daily atr value for this particular last traded price last candle the last candle is a last candle means closed the last closed candle not on the live market after market hours the last closed candle atr value it is displayed and for this atr calculated 15% atr the next column 10% atr and the next column 5% atr and the last column 3% atr in case if you don't want 3% atr you want 2% atr you simply calculate this value into 2 divided by 100 whatever the value is there sorry in the daily atr whatever the value is there that value into 2 divided by 100 you can do it in a simple calculation in the calculator you will get the value but remember one thing here whatever the values i am showing in this report i didn't round up the values i did not round up the values 
ఐ వాంట్ యూ పీపుల్ డూ ఇట్ రౌండ్ అప్ ద వాల్యూస్ సి లుక్ యువర్ యువర్ నైంటీ సిక్స్ పాయింట్ వన్ నైన్ ఈజ్ దేర్ ఇఫ్ యూ వాంట్ ఫిఫ్టీన్ పర్సెంట్ ఏటీఆర్ ఫర్ నిఫ్టీ బ్యాంక్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు మేక్ ఇట్ యాజ్ నైంటీ సిక్స్ పాయింట్ ట్వంటీ దట్ ఈస్ అ వే యూ హ్యావ్ టు టేక్ సి హియర్ నిఫ్టీ ఫిఫ్టీ థర్టీ ఫైవ్ పాయింట్ జీరో ఫైవ్ సో యూ నీడ్ నాట్ రౌండ్ అప్ బికాస్ ఎగ్జాక్ట్ వాల్యూ ఈజ్ దేర్ యూ నీడ్ నాట్ రౌండ్ అప్ ఓన్లీ ద వాల్యూస్ ఆర్ నాట్ హ్యావింగ్ ఎగ్జాక్ట్ ద పైసాస్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు రౌండ్ అప్ ద వాల్యూస్ so this is the point you have to use if nifty does not support or nifty bank does not support paisa while trading you have to round up this 35.05 to 36 bank nifty 96.19 you have to round up to 97 if the their prices does not support while trading the they does not support paisa then you have to round up to the nearest rupee values instead of 96.19 you have to make it 97 you got it clarity so this is the reason why i didn't round up the values because we never know whether they support uh, rupees or they support paisas if they if they support paisa you have to round up to the paisa value if they support rupees you have to round up to the rupee value hope you got the clarity so you you can do that because you know it's very simple so whatever the chart is supporting while uh, trading so accordingly you round up these values and what i am deciding what i am deciding from now onwards every day i will generate this report and i will publish for your reference purpose so let me scroll down while scrolling down i'll give you only few seconds time you have to pause the video and then you have to check the values for your favorite stocks this is the mechanism i apply every day i'm just telling you so this is how i scroll down i'll give few seconds maybe 1 2 3 4 5 and then again scroll down again 1 2 3 4 5 again i scroll down this is the way i'll be giving you few seconds time because otherwise the video length will increase you can easily pause the video right before i move on to the next uh, page i mean uh, scroll down below you can pause the video suppose you want reliance you pause the video see here reliance is there now you can study so what is the last traded price i'm showing you all the headings here while scrolling down this is last traded price this is daily atr this is a 15% atr this is 10% percent atr that way you can study after that if you want to proceed further again proceed the video further and again you will be getting the next page so this is the way i want to present this report every day to you okay where i will be keeping this data every day i don't know how many of you noticed apart from your training videos every day i am publishing three videos one is previous days high liquidity zone analysis that is the analysis part apart from that i am uh, publishing two more videos they are related to the reports one is high liquidity zone re related uh, video and also that is also having stocks near demand and supply zones for all the time frames apart from daily and uh, 75 minutes high liquidity zones we will identify in that video and the second video is uh, uh bullish trade setup and bearish trade setup for monthly income trade and weekly income trade mainly to help uh, swing traders so this is the way we are generating two different reports stocks near demand and supply zones will help uh, swing traders will also help uh, short term traders and mainly it will help uh, daily and 75 minutes high liquidity zone traders in both the videos at the end of the video before closing the video from now onwards i will uh, generate this report you open the video go to the end of the video and you can find this uh, list this is what i am going to do from now onwards so till yesterday in my reports i did not generate 
because from because now you land stop buffers you know how to use stop buffers only thing is you need the values so that data i will be providing one advantage you get is uh, all these calculated values are there 15% 10% 5% and 3% and moreover for all these stocks are available in case other than this list if you want to get the value for uh, uh, some other stocks because some people trade in uh, nifty 500 stocks some people trade some junk stocks also right who are uh, what to say uh, some some stock brokers will be ma doing manipulations in some of the stocks some people like those stocks only and they get into the trouble later but uh, that data is not available here right so for if any of those stocks other than fnw stocks and uh, these indices if you want the data as i already told you go to trading view in the indicator type uh, average true range or atr it will display and add that into your chart and place your mouse on that particular chart it will display the latest value or whichever the date you place your mouse that value it will display it your value it is just a line uh, graph it's not a candle graphs atr see here atr is just a value for all these values trading view will pl plot a graph so if you place uh, on a particular day if you place your mouse trading view will display that value but anyway i never used uh, the trading view because already i'm having this software i didn't care about that but for you people it is important so trading view is one dependency but remaining stocks f and w stocks you have the complete list here this will be much easier for you for the reference purpose especially who are trading in uh, futures and options are trading or even cash trades only in f and w stocks you can use these reports okay this is about uh, how you can make use of uh, atr values hope you got clarity but um, always remember these values they are very important you should remember only hit trade i improved the value from 2% i changed it to 3% still if anybody wants to use only 2% you are allowed but don't go be below 2% that is not allowed why i want to fix 3% is, is this is more effective that is what i felt so this is about stop buffers hope this information will be useful to you so from now onwards whatever the trades you do or paper trading whatever you are doing use this uh, stop buffers some of you people already completed the courses outside and attending these lessons so for you people make use of the reports i'm providing probably you are aware of these concepts but only thing look into this hit improvised value and prefer this value 3% rather than 2% so this is about today's session hope in the next session we will be focusing on position sizing and risk management rules and after that in another video trailing stop loss i'll be focusing and position size is a very very important concept that is the topmost until you complete position sizing you are not allowed to take real trades the moment position size is completed you are allowed to take real trades please remember all these days why i restricted you to do only paper trading is because you didn't complete position size position size concept uh, it will save you especially save your capital many people uh, lost their capital because they didn't uh, properly uh, managed with the help of position size first of all they are not aware of this concept without this guidance people do the trading and many people lost their capital once you lose the capital you will be out of the trading you can't do anything saving the capital is very very important how position sizing will save our capital that is what you will understand once you get into this see once you get a loss you will get a loss but getting bigger loss or getting smaller loss that makes the difference 
position sizing will try to minimize our loss that to within our accepted level you are in a position to accept that loss only up to that level it is limiting you that means you may lose a very small negligible amount from your capital still your capital is there next trades you can recover and again you can regain whatever you lost earlier that money again you can get it back once you get into this lesson you will understand it looks like a magic hope the information in this video is helpful to you if you are having any questions please put them in the comment section i'll try to address or if required in the next video i will try to address your questions so let's take a break let us all meet again in our next video thank you